from the Green Cross Vets in Chatswood. Today's a very, very important topic. We're talking about everything dental and dental hygiene. Um, we know that pets have teeth, of course, and that the oral hygiene and oral health is incredibly important. Um, unfortunately, this is an aspect that some pet parents tend to forget about until the serious problems do arise and develop. We really want to emphasize regular checkups are important to be aware of your pet's mouth, the way they look, the way they smell, and to give you today some really key tips and insights onto how to keep them clean. Again, I'm Dr. Adam. I've been a vet for about 18 years, come up to 19 years. We're coming live from Green Cross Vets at Chatswood, talking about everything dentist everything dental uh, today. There'll be a little question box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to write your questions down. I'll do my best today to answer them. It's a big topic. Um, hopefully we can get through it all. If not, I'll get back to it and write back um, the answers to your questions. Um, later on today, we've got a very special guest. We have a, 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 an awesome dog called Charlie. Hopefully, hopefully he will be able to help assist me and uh, help brush his teeth and give you some ideas and tips and tricks on how to do that moving forward. So if you're ready, well, let's get started. Um, again, feel free to write questions down in the box. It'd be really, really fantastic. So dental disease, what's the fuss? Why is it so important? Dental disease, dental issues is a massive issue. It's a massive problem and it's very, very common. We see it every day in veterinary life from puppies to kittens to, to dogs to, 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 um, to rabbits. We, we see it all day. It affects something like 80% of dogs and cats over the age of three to four years. And this is a worldwide problem. It's a, such a common problem um, that recently, in a recent study, and I'm gonna read for you, in a recent study, it's been identified as a significant impact on animal welfare. There was a study recently performed in the UK of about half a million dogs. And dental disorders have emerged as a priority area for health-related welfare impacts and improvements. Um, of course, the other two issues that were, um, de that were um, detected in the study was, of course, osteoarthritis and overweight, which were both covered in previous live Q&As. Dental disease is a significant welfare impact on our dogs and cats. In another study with the, actually in this year, from the American Animal Hospital Association, I'm going to read again because I think it's quite powerful. Um, they define the concept that a pet is suffering from oral pain infection and inflammation that may not always be apparent but is affecting their quality of life is a reality that may not always be fully appreciated by not only the veterinary professional but also understood by the pet owning public as in yourselves. Compromised dental health can affect a pet's overall health, the longevity, the quality of life, the welfare but also the interaction with the, with the owner without exhibiting clinical signs of disease. This is a massive topic, guys. So the impacts of dental disease are, 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 are huge, um, and the pain and suffering it does cause these guys is really important. So what causes dental disease? What are the, what are, what's the main cause? Dental disease is caused by plaque, and plaque's that furry material that you may feel in the morning when you wake up or at night time. It's a furry material that you feel on your, on your mouth, this sort of white, sort of yellow material that really is quite, quite, quite smells. Um, it's a buildup of of um, saliva or some dead food or food I should say, some cells, over time will form or help to form uh, tartar, which is that hard yellow material. When you go to the dentist, they scrape that off. Over time, together, plaque and tartar will cause the gums to become inflamed and red and bleed. And of course, we all know that as, as, as gingivitis. Um, gum recession occurs over time and inevitably, and I know I'm going through this fast, inevitably, gum recession will lead to teeth becoming rotten and eventually they're gonna fall out. Of course, there's a lot of steps on those to, uh, from a pathology point of view, but the ideal thing is that if we can stop the plaque or minimize the plaque, then plaque won't form tartar and these dogs and cats will have really, really fantastic teeth. So the focus is stopping plaque and there are really, really three main ways to, to stop plaque or maybe even four ways. Um, the first way is daily brush. We need to daily brush. Um, we need to remove the plaque from these teeth. We can do a number of ways, and we're gonna get Charlie in in a second to help try and try and try and demonstrate how to brush his teeth properly. Stop the plaque, you'll stop the progression to tartar. But also, even if you do brush your teeth, brush your teeth and your dog's teeth, of course, um, on, a, on a regular basis, if these dogs are eating too much soft food, then there's not enough physical abrasion from the teeth and the food. So when the teeth sink into the food, the food falls apart and there's no physical abrasion. You really need that physical abrasion on these dogs' mouths, on cats' mouths, to remove the plaque. 
Um, so soft foods um, is important to try to minimize, I won't say avoid, but to minimize. Um, of course, dry food um, is, is also quite important. So the more dry food dogs and cats have, the better for their teeth because the teeth sink into the dry food and the dry food almost crumbles away. Saying that with dry food, the size of the dry food is really important. If you've got a, a, um, a, a Great Dane, for example, and you're feeding them a food fit for a chihuahua, then obviously that's not gonna be a good quality food or a good, a good size food. Um, so it's really important to pick the type of the food and the size of the kibble with, I suppose, the size of the dog. Not so much a problem in cats because cats' body weight ranges sort of from, what, three kilos to sort of eight, 10 kilos. The kibble size doesn't change that much, but in dogs, it does change quite a lot. Really important also to make sure your dog or cat, um, that stopped, um, that your dog or cat is actually, <laughs> start again, um, is actually not eating the food too quickly. Um, so if they're gobbling their food down really fast, they're not getting the contact time, and of course we need the contact time between the food and the, um, and the, and the teeth to remove that plaque. So just to reiterate guys, we're talking about dental disease today. We're trying to minimize the plaque. And the three ways of doing this to brush their teeth on a daily basis, to encourage chewing of dry food, of the appropriate size dry food, and of course, to ensure that, 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 that dogs and cats chew their food really, really slowly. That's very, very important. There, there is a fourth um, way we can, we can that, that dental disease happens. And I suppose that fourth way is confirmation. Some breeds of dogs, their mouths are not conformed appropriately for their, um, or, or ideally, and their teeth are all over the place. Typical dogs are the Boston Terriers, the Pugs, the Pekingese, any cats with a short face, the exotic cats, for example, where the teeth are all scrunched around for a little bit, um, and the teeth mightn't be in the, right, in the right areas. So now that we know what causes dental disease, and that is the accumulation of plaque, what are some of the signs that point towards bad oral hygiene? How will you know at home if your dog or cat has got bad dental disease? Before we go into that, please feel free to send in your questions. There's a questions box down the bottom. Happy to answer um, today your questions. I'm Dr. Adam, I'm coming live today from the Green Cross Vets in Chats. We're talking about everything dental, dental hygiene, dental health, incredibly important. So some of the things that you will watch out for or that you might notice when you're at home with your dog or cat on the couch or on your bed, is the bad breath. These dogs and cats have got bad breath. Doggy breath, it's not normal. Um, doggy breath shouldn't really smell all that much. Maybe a little bit of an off, off smell here and there, but um, it shouldn't be offensive. Um, in advanced stages, dogs and cats can be off their food. They might um, not be, they, they might be reluctant to chew their toys or their, or their, or their treats and have a preference for soft food because when they chew, it actually sore. Again, dental disease is actually quite sore and quite, and quite painful. Often you'll see red or inflamed or bleeding gums. Um, and that, again, that's very, very sore. And you might see the saliva um, have, a, have, a, have a blood tinge because of the blood in the, in, in the mouth. Occasionally we see swelling under the eye, quite classically in dogs. About here under the eye, we do see a swelling, often a dental abscess. One of the most common teeth is the premolar four, which is called the carnassial tooth, and uh, in dogs at least. And uh, that's quite common to form a dental abscess. Sometimes we see dogs and cats becoming a little bit more lethargic than normal. They're a bit recluse, they might show behavioral signs. They could be sore and they wanna hide away from you and not be touched around the mouth. Um, so if your pet is a bit lethargic or they're less inclined to be eating their normal food, they're, they're, they're probably gonna be in pain. That's a really good indication. Please bring them to your local Green Cross vet and have them checked out. In these next coming months, we're offering free dental checks to, to dogs and cats to make sure these teeth are really quite picture perfect. Of course, in the severe cases, um, dogs and cats will be losing weight because they're not eating properly. Um, and um, that, can be, that can be a significant issue. So we know what causes dental disease, we know what to, what to watch out for at home, but what are the implications? What's the long-term and the short-term effects or possible effects that we do see in, in dogs and cats moving, moving forward? Of course, we've mentioned the welfare aspects. Of course, it's not nice having a dog or a cat being in pain, having red and flame gums. They're not, they're not happy, they're not healthy. So, so welfare is an issue, pain, inflammation, bleeding of the gums, but also we do know that there is some evidence to suggest that bad teeth can have systemic effects on the body, which may involve, sometimes involve, or contribute to liver disease, sometimes kidney disease, 
and, and certainly there's evidence to suggest it may contribute to some types of specific heart disease. Um, and those are something that we need to be, to be watching out for, for the, uh, for the immediate and short term, of course, long term health and welfare of our dogs and of our cats. So we've spoken a little bit about dental disease and how it occurs and why it occurs and the importance of plaque. Um, and of course, we are talking all things dental today. But I think it's important now to say, well, how can we prevent this? How can we, um, how can we, what practical steps at home can we do? And I think for this, we actually might grab Charlie and I think might be an awesome thing to do because I think what we're gonna do now is try to demonstrate how we're gonna brush a dog's teeth and, and some of the, ticks, the, the, the tips and the tricks that we use on a day-to-day -day basis when we brush our dog's teeth. It's important to realize that when you brush a dog's teeth or when you brush a cat's teeth, it's really try, quite imperative to try and do it from a very, very early age. When you start as a puppy or as a, or, or as a kitten, they become very used to it, they become very accustomed to it, have a very high impact treat, a liver treat, a little bit of cabanos, a little bit of chicken, for example, a bit of tuna paste in cats. To act as a positive reward, we want to brush their teeth and give them a treat, make it a very, very positive um, experience. All right, Charlie, one second, thank you. This is little Charlie. This is little Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. There we go. Charlie's a little bit nervous this morning. Um, he's got a bit of stage fright, and hopefully he will allow us to look in his mouth and to show you guys at home what to what to do in the best ways moving moving forward. Um, Charlie is about five years of age. He's a little toy poodle, and he's he's incredibly awesome. Um, he works in the office where, we, where I work sometimes, and um, he's a bit nervous, but he's, it's okay. All right, so first of all, I want, I'd like to show you how to look in their mouth and one of the tips and tricks, same in cats. Just lift up the lip, flip the lip, and see if you can see those teeth. You can see where my lower thumb is here, all those, all those sharp teeth, but also very, very yellow teeth. And if you were to look close, I'm just gonna stand for a second. If you look closely, you can see the redness of the gums, the yellowness of those teeth. You can see that extending from this, what we call this, from premolar four or carnassial tooth, all the way up to the canines and of course the incisors. The same thing is in the cat guy. So um, I've tried Charlie this after, um, already on treats and he doesn't like the treats that I've got him, unfortunately, but now would be an awesome time to give him a little bit of cabanossia, a bit of tuna paste or a bit of cheese, something like that to reward him. Um, notice that um, he's, he, is, he is sitting quite well. He is shaking, I'm not gonna lie. He's a bit nervous and, th and that's okay. He's on a little towel here and the towel, doing this at home, um, better than a non-slip table, sorry, better than a table that's slipping, have a non-slip surface, really, really important. Same in the cats, open up their mouth and try and look in their mouth on, on this side as well. Brushing the teeth is incredibly important and the reason we brush our teeth, like in our world, is to remove the plaque. We want to brush teeth at least twice a day in a, in, with us, but if you can do dolls and cats teeth once a day, you're really on the on the on the right journey and the right impact. Um, it's important to use a dog toothpaste. Why? Because dogs don't tolerate the fluoride that we often see in the human toothpastes. And I'm not sure how they tolerate the peppermint spearmint. Where are you going? I'm not sure how they to they they tolerate. The, don't, don't, don't look at the cat this way. I'm not sure how they tolerate the peppermint spearmint flavors that we might see and might find in the human toothpastes. Um, with the advent of chicken and beef toothpaste in the, in, the, um, in the veterinary world, some dogs love them. You can have an option of using a finger toothbrush. You might use a, a soft children's toothbrush. Um, you might use, use your finger. I'm gonna use and demonstrate for you a finger toothbrush. Um, I bought this um, next door today, of course, um, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a very, very soft toothbrush to use with some, with, with some bristles. I'm using today some toothpaste, um, which is actually beef flavor. Um, Charlie has actually um, proven this is actually quite nice, and yum, here we go. So I'm gonna use a little bit of toothpaste, probably the same amount of toothpaste as what you would normally use on your own toothbrush. Pop it onto the toothbrush, like so, and what I wanna do is very gently, very calmly brush his teeth. I'm trying to do a nice circular motion of his teeth. We'll try that again. A nice circular motion of his, of his teeth. I'm not sure if you can see that from there. And I'm trying to really concentrate on where the gum and the tooth meet. Nice circular motion, nice and gentle, giving him a break when he, when he needs it, and also doing the other side, which you may not, may not be able to see easily from the, from the video. 
It's sometimes a little bit easier in bigger dogs using these toothbrushes. In the smaller dogs, I think the size may be a limiting factor, but certainly now's your time to be a bit more inventive. And if the toothbrush doesn't work, don't persist with it. Don't, um, don't continue with it. It's not a bad idea if you have someone to help you at home having their, having, their, having their hand on their bum. What you can use as an alternative to a finger toothbrush is a swab or a gauze swab. You might want to use a chuck swipe or a bit of stocking material. Dip it into the toothpaste. The advantage of this is that it's, it's quite thinner. Um, it's not as thick as the toothbrush and you've got probably a bit more control. All right, Charlie. There we go. Okay, so opening his mouth and brushing nice and gently, nice and softly, trying to do all his teeth. So we might spin you around so you can show your fame to the public. There we go. A nice brush of his teeth. There we go. Now, I have to confess, I have to confess, when you look at Charlie's teeth, you can see they are very, 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 very yellow. You might not be able to see from the angle, but they're very, very yellow. Brushing his teeth at the moment will not remove that yellowness. That's tartar. It will remove the, it will, it will remove the pluck, absolutely. Brushing at the moment with Charlie is not gonna be terribly advantageous because it's not gonna work effectively. When his teeth are like this, he really needs to be seen. Please book him in for a, for a free dental check at, at, the, at your local Green Cross Vets. We're doing these dental checks for the next couple of months and have him checked out. Charlie really needs to have his teeth cleaned. Um, brushing won't keep them clean at the moment. So it's more of a demonstration. But Charlie, you've been a fantastic little boy and I might put you onto the floor because I think you're very nervous and we want to make sure that you're gonna go home quite well. Say goodbye, Charlie. Bye-bye. All right, awesome. Okay, so we've mentioned, we've mentioned brushing of the teeth. We've mentioned a couple of ways of doing the brushing of the teeth with finger toothbrushes, with toothpaste. Important not to use, um, not to use human toothpaste, of course. If you can brush your teeth every single day, that's really, 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 really fantastic. Um, um, again, we're trying to minimize the, the accumulation of plaque and plaque forms tartar. Guys, I'm Dr. Adam. We're coming live today from the Green Cross Vets in Chats. We're talking everything dental. Um, we've got a couple of questions that are coming through. I'll get to them very, very shortly. The importance of dental oral care, the importance of doing checkups, the importance of brushing your teeth and your dog's teeth, of course, um, every day, every day. So apart from brushing, we mentioned um, it's important to choose the right kibble size, make sure the dry fruit is the right size for the pet's mouth, but also trying to, is to slow down or reduce the speed of eating. Um, it's quite important to reduce that speed of eating um, so we can get the contact time. So. This is probably the most common sort of dental disease that we do see. We do tend to grade it from one to four. It's a little bit arbitrary, but, but we tend to give it a grade. But sometimes we see dogs and cats with, with, with perfect teeth that are perfectly white, but have got dental issues. And some of the other things that we do see in, as veterinarians on a day-to-day -day basis is overcrowding of teeth, certainly more teeth in the mouth than there should be. You should never see um, two teeth from the one hole. So one tooth, one hole, that, 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 that's incredibly important. We occasionally see um, retained baby teeth, what we call the deciduous teeth, they haven't come out yet. We occasionally see unerupted teeth um, that are under the gum still, and they can cause problems, of course, with, uh, with ongoing teeth and cleanliness in, in the future. And, and as mentioned before, we do see conformational issues in certain breeds of dogs, we mentioned the brachycephalic dogs, so the pugs, the Pekingese, the exotic cats, for example. We also see it quite commonly in bigger dogs like Staffordshire Bull Terriers and also Labradors where they have issues potentially with their canine teeth and they can cause wear and tear on those canine teeth. As veterinarians, we do dentistry almost every day. We see it every day and it's really important to try and, um, try and um, uh, keep the teeth clean. Of course, there are significant health concerns that we do see in dogs and cats with, help with dental disease. Um, and of course, welfare and pain inflammation of these is, is incredibly important to watch out for and to, to prevent. So um, I suppose if I had to give you three pearls of wisdom in trying to keep your dog and your cat's teeth clean, um, uh, number one, or maybe four, start as a puppy or a kitten. Um, if you start as a puppy or a kitten, then you've conditioned them, you've given them a reward, a positive reward, and you've associated a positive event with a reward or a treat. Some cats, and please be careful, some cats can be very, very difficult, and we certainly do not want you to, do not want you to injure yourself 
um, whether it be a dog or a cat. So if your cat is is upset, your dog is not compliant, for example, please brushing them mutton be the, the, the ideal thing to do. Um, ensure your pet doesn't eat too fast. So you might need to use a anti-gold bowl or spread the food on the ground, for example, or raise the food off, a, off the ground with some, with, some, with some bricks or a support. So eating from a height rather than eating from, from the ground. And ensure also that the size of the dry food is appropriate for the size of the mouth. Again, we don't want to have a tiny dog food kibble size like this for a Great Dane uh, as well. All right, guys. Dr. Adam here coming from live question and answer from Green Cross Vets in Chatswood. Happy to answer any questions. Please feel free to write them down. I think we have um, some questions with dental disease, probably not so much related to dental disease, but this is from Bear the Golden 23. Thanks, Bear the Golden. Um, if possible, could you tell me some meats safe to be fed raw to my 16 month old golden pup? Um, there are some considerations that you must entertain with feeding raw meat. Um, I would always recommend human grade raw meat. One of the big concerns is hygiene. When you prepare raw meat at home, it needs to be separated utensils and boards and those sort of things um, from, from the human consumption. Uh, we definitely hear about um, E. coli and Campylobacter and Salmonella. The potential concerns issues feeding dogs raw, raw meat. It's mainly in the handling. So if you're gonna feed raw meat, I would suggest if you can feeding a human grade raw meat, um, make it chunky. And I think for a, a golden, um, golden pup, golden retriever, maybe a golden Labrador, not quite sure, is a chunky steak um, off cuts is, is okay. The caution I must exercise is, and uh, also talked with you about is that it's not always recommended to feed raw meat because of the health concerns of that. Um, and of course, if you want to feed and need to feed raw meat, please also feed, please, um, um, feed a human grade raw meat rather than a pet food raw meat, if you can, if you can uh, as well. Um, next question is from um, Cappuccino. Thank you, Cappuccino. Um, this is a good question. Is it okay to have some plaque on your dog's teeth or should they be crystal white? Crystal white is what we're aiming for. We know as humans, when we brush our teeth in the morning, maybe come lunchtime or thereabouts, there's some plaque on your mouth. And when we go home, we have dinner and we brush again. So plaque will accumulate within 20 minutes to an hour, depends on, on the individual, but it should be brushed off as often as possible. Of course, the longer plaque is on the, the teeth, the more likely that plaque will calcify into tartar and that will they will contribute to problems in, um, with, with plaque, with gingivitis and pain, inflammation around the mouth, um, leading to dental disease that we've been speaking about. So it's not okay, but it's common, but we recommend brushing every day to remove that plaque, reduce the chances of plaque causing, causing a problem. Are beef brisket bones, next question, thank you. Are beef brisket bones safe for dogs? From Elise Rossitano, thank you Elise for your question. Are beef brisket bones safe for dogs? Um, the, Quick and easy answer to that question is no, because, because as veterinarians, we don't recommend bones to dogs because, because there is a huge risk of bones causing a problem. So the problems include fracturing of the teeth, the premolar four, what I showed you on Charlie, uh, or any other teeth in the mouth, the bones can get stuck in the mouth, in the throat, um, they can get stuck in the stomach um, and they can cause problems as they're, as they're passing through. The Australian Veterinary Dental Society does not recommend giving bones to dogs because of these issues. Um, now, I know bones are very, very popular and I know this question was, was gonna come up. I know, very, I know bones are very, very popular feeding dogs um, and I know that um, they can certainly, dogs can certainly love them. If you want to feed a bone to a dog, Please, it is, there are some risks with that. Never, ever, ever cook bone. So no, no baked, fried, steamed, smoked um, bones at all. We know they're definitely no-nos. They can splint and cause terrible problems in dogs. But if you really want to feed a dog a bone, it, there are risks. Make sure the bone is bigger than your dog's head. Um, that way they can spend time chewing that bone. A bone is there for chewing. It's not for the meat. And, and we definitely do see it. I'm certainly seeing my time. Dogs that chew can't, can't get the meat off the bone and they inhale the entire bone with the meat and nine out of 10 times it'll get stuck in the throat or even worse in the, in, in the chest right here. Of course, 
um, using an endoscope or cracking the chest is needed to, 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 to get that out if you can get that out. So bones carry risks and you need to be in, informed about this. Again, the Australian Veterinary Dental, Dental Society does not recommend giving bones to dogs and veterinarians, we don't recommend giving bones to dogs. Although people do it, you need to be very, very careful. I hope that answers your question. It's a very controversial topic, um, but I hope that answers your question, Elise, and thank you for that question. Um, I have a question that is possibly related to dental disease um, from Doug the British Bulldog. Thanks, Doug the British Bulldog. How can you stop puppies from biting you because they're teething? Um, Doug the British Bulldog's very, very common question. I suppose this does relate to dental disease because, of course, from about four months of age, give or take, um, puppies will start to lose their their baby teeth and they'll start to get their adult teeth and, and they can teeth. So they're wanting to 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 try and chew something. Best thing to do is to is to find a nice chew toy for them to have um, that they can't destroy, that they can't chew and swallow. The toys that I really like to offer um, dogs in these purposes are the Kong toys. There are other brands available, of course. I like stuffing the Kong toy with a bit of, um, a bit of, I don't know, um, cheese or a bit of chicken, um, cooked chicken, or something like that as, a, as an encouraging thing. Maybe a tennis ball might help. Um, I would not leave a puppy um, alone with a small toy, and I would definitely would not leave any puppy alone with a toy they can pull apart, because obviously they can chew that toy and it can cause a massive amount of, uh, amount of, amount of problems. So, so instigate toys with these guys. They'll chew on these toys. It'll be very, very soothing for these guys. Guys, I'm Dr. Adam. We're coming live from the Green Cross Vets in Chatswood. We're talking all things dental today. Um, we've spoken a lot about, about, about dental disease, about plaque and tartar, the welfare, the pain that, that these guys go through. We've, we've mentioned that there are, um, that, that Green Cross is offering free dental checks um, for the next couple of months with your dog and your cat there, um, and that's incredibly important to entertain. We've spoken about the signs of dental disease, the, 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 the smell, the red gums, the swollen eyes off their food, the saliva. It's incredibly important. The take care messages, brush every day, try to use, uh, or please use um, um, dog toothpaste and don't use human, human toothpaste. Um, and we've spoken about the reasons why. Make sure your dog and cat are eating slowly, and of course, choose the appropriate kibble size um, as well. Um, Charlie's been fantastic. Charlie's a little bit nervous, but that's okay. He was on TV, I know how, I know how he feels. Um, guys, before I go, I wanted to thank you all for tuning in on this live Q&A with myself, Dr. Adam, live from Green Cross Vets in Chatswood, and remind you that we are conducting free dental checks for all cats and dogs this month, and also July. We're also throwing in a $50 voucher on a dental scale and polish if your pet needs it. So like Charlie, for example, he, we know he needs dental, uh, we, know, we know he needs uh, some dental work done. He fits into that 80% of dogs and cats over three to four years of age that are in that category, he needs some treatment done. The longer you live dental disease, the worse it gets, the, the, more, the more involved it is. There is a cost, of course, Catch them early, prevent dental disease when it's early, and you will prevent the progression to, to the future. Daily brush, incredibly important, stop the plaque. Guys, thank you so much for having me today. It's been a wonderful time as always um, on our Q&A with dental disease. I'm Dr. Adam. Please feel free to submit all your questions in the boxes below. I will get back to you, um, I promise. And uh, I wanna wish you guys an awesome rest of the day and keep on smiling. Thanks, bye for now.